Today in the news, Intel's trying to sweep something under the rug, and more info on XE. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Intel and their forums. You know, the place where people go for help with their products. Well, last week, Intel thought that it was a good idea to delete the main post where frustrated users were discussing the problems that they've been having with Intel's Ethernet controller on their Z490 motherboard, specifically the Intel i225. The deletion is insulting, given that the last response on the forum post was from an Intel customer support representative who said, we'd like to inform you that our engineering team is still investigating this issue. We are currently waiting for the feedback and rest assured that we will get back to you as soon as we have heard from them. Well, that's a typical corporate response. If you're not aware of the situation, Intel's i225 Foxville family of two and a half gig ethernet controllers are used in a lot of motherboards, desktops, notebooks, heck, you can find them on AMD PCs. Unfortunately, the first two versions slash steppings of those controllers are pretty much doomed. They have a hardware design flaw that affects stability and performance. You can get heavy packet loss, lag spikes in game, disconnects, no connection to router, the controller itself not showing up in Windows Device Manager, network speeds dropping to half when the connection is dropped and then renewed, etc. Basically, all of the stuff that you don't want to happen when you're trying to use an internet connection, whether for gaming or otherwise. Now, Intel acknowledged this issue in an official memo to its OEMs in the middle of 2020. The memo specifically states that this is a hardware flaw and that they would try to have a fix by the time of Rocket Lake S's launch. Since then, Intel actually released a third version slash stepping, that's a hardware revision, the i225 v2. It does fix the hardware flaw, but that still leaves a ton of people stuck with broken earlier versions of that ethernet controller. And there's a lot of people having a lot of trouble. If you are plagued by this issue, Intel published an official fix, but look at my hands here. I mean, fix for these problems. It's still more of a band-aid. It's a combo of a new updated firmware and an old driver, but many users are still saying that all of that just makes it so that they don't have to reset the controller when their system restarts. You still get packet loss and a lot of other issues. So Intel, shame on you. You should get that recalled. And if you think that's all Intel's trying to hide, well, there's more. Well, this time it's more of a leak though. Remember their goal for a discrete GPU, the so-called Odyssey? It had this uh, one shadowy video, a bunch of futuristic 2035 fake renderings, tons of announcements, and that got people excited and uh, maybe too excited. That's because here we are two years later and there's literally no products for gaming enthusiasts. Obviously, there's some very serious delays going on behind closed doors. I feel like anyone who is part of the Odyssey team at Intel should have a, a, a t-shirt saying, they promised me this and uh, all I got was this. Anyways, we already saw DG1 rolled into some limited OEM systems and now there's words that DG2 is on its way. And boy, have there been some wild rumors about it. So take everything that comes after this with a huge boulder of salt. Let's start off with the specs and it looks like it will max out at 512 execution units and up to 16 gigabytes of memory. There's gonna be other parts too with less EUs and memory, but how would the top dog perform? Well, currently, the rumor is that these specs will push the 512 EU model to compete with the RTX 3070, but let's think of it this way. Right now, the DG1 with 96 EUs is about as fast as a GT 1030. Multiply that by about five, since it has five times the EUs, and you get something along the lines of GTX 1660 Ti levels of performance, maybe a little bit higher than that. This actually makes sense since Intel's own slides mentioned that they want to hit the mid-range market as a stepping stone before enthusiast level GPUs come out. Now for DG2, if it really is an HPG product, remember DG1 is not, then in that case, Intel is moving from its own 10 nanometer super fin secret sauce to TSMC's process, which could allow for some pretty high clock speeds. If Intel goes from 1650 megahertz to two gigahertz, we're at about RX 5700 levels of performance. 
Theoretically, take that salt, put it in your mouth. Something else that's not mentioned, but needs to be addressed is that it's completely possible that Intel will launch these once again, only in laptops and OEM markets. And of course, a lot hinges on Intel's drivers because even right now, they're a bit of a dog's breakfast on Tiger Lake CPUs that sport XE graphics. So there's too much to consider before predicting the performance. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. And that's pretty much it for the all Intel episode. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here. Subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one.